Hi, this is an informational video for parents of Starkville Table Hall Consolidated School District students with IEPs. And this is going to be talking about Mississippi Department of Education and U.S. Department of Education guidance for our students that fall under the Individuals with Disabilities Education Act, or IDEA, during the time of school, school closures for coronavirus. I'm Julie Jones. I'm the Director of Student Support Services for Startwell Octavia Hall Schools. With Startwell Octavia Hall Schools, we have a commitment to our students. It's part of our mission that we want to achieve excellence by facilitating the discovery and development of each student's passion, purpose, and potential. And with that mission, we have goals that we want to focus on. Student achievement, health, wellness, and school culture, human resources, community collaboration, and operational effectiveness. Now, while the schools are closed for the coronavirus, these are going to look a little bit different, but we want to assure you that we still have these main goals as our focus. We want our students to achieve as much as possible while still trying to look out for their wellness, their health, and the wellness of our school staff, administration, and faculty. To do this, we are going to employ all of our human resources, every person, their knowledge, their experience, and how they can help provide these services to your kids. In addition, we're looking for the community who have already come out in droves to help us, um, wanting to volunteer, wanting to help out with supplies. We're looking for that as we move forward into unknown times. And then with our operational effectiveness, what that means is that we'll use every resource we have in order to make this as successful as possible. So right now we're going to look at guidance that was sent out from the Mississippi Department of Education Office of Special Education on March 17th. And um, the document is called the question and answer for parents for services for students with disabilities during school closures. The first question and address is, is should my child with disabilities be receiving special education services during the school closures? And the U.S. Department of Education's Office of Special Education and Rehabilitative Services, or OSERS, put out guidance on March 12th stating that if a district isn't providing any educational services to students during the closure, then the school would not be required to provide special education services to students with disabilities during the same time period. And so with our schools being closed this week, and um, we were looking at it being a, a short-term closure, we have not provided any academic services to um, any of the students. But that doesn't mean that we haven't been thinking about it in the back of our minds, just in case the closure was more prolonged than what we expected. And so what we can tell you is, while we don't know how long the closures will last, we can tell you that the service time, their time without services will not be a prolonged time. Um, teachers have already been working together, working with administration, working with each other, and talking to parents to determine the best way to provide services, both for our general education students and our special. So question two is, if the district provides online instruction to the general student population, will they be required to provide services to students with disabilities? Yes. If and when the district begins providing instruction via virtual means or through work sent home, your student's IEP goals will also be addressed on an individual basis. We must ensure that students with IEPs have equal access to the same educational opportunities in order for us to meet the requirements of a free appropriate public education or FAPE. And so that leads to question number three. How will special education services be provided to my child during school closures? If the temporary closures due to COVID-19 result in a school district providing online or virtual instruction, the student's IEP committee will determine if some or all of the identified services for the student can be provided through alternate or additional methods. And so when we talk about the IEP committee's meeting, we're used to the general education teachers, um, the administration, the special education teacher, the parent, and whoever 
whoever else may be involved in that IEP all coming together in one room, sitting down at a table and talking about what's best for this student. It's going to look a little bit different right now while we're limited on um, how we can meet and how many people can meet and where everyone is. And so when we talk about um, the IEP committee meeting and we talk about service delivery, all of these are gonna be through alternate or additional methods. And so when we're talking about those alternate methods, we have to um, consider what we have available. And if we can't meet face to face, the next best thing might be to use um, like a video chat with a Zoom app or FaceTime or Skype or Google Hangouts or whatever means that you may have access to. If you don't have access to a computer or a smartphone for those apps, you can do a teleconference just over the telephone talking about it. Um, and we can get documentation to you so that you can look at the documentation while you're talking about it. But there are several ways for us to meet without having to put each other at risk due to exposure of um, coronavirus. And what about the related services? Now, when we talk about related services, we're talking about occupational therapy, speech therapy, physical therapy, behavior interventions, and those kind of things. And so with the schools being closed, obviously we can't provide those like we typically would. However, it is our hope that the majority of them can be provided by the alternate means as well, just like the instruction is. Um, but there are gonna be times when we're looking at some of the therapies that maybe some of those goals that they were working on are not feasible to do over alternate means, which leads us into question four. What will happen if my child is not able to receive certain special education services during school closures? Once the IEP committee has determined what services can and cannot be rendered by alternate means during school closures, those um, services that can be will be implemented through the plan stated in an IEP amendment. Those that cannot be implemented will be temporarily suspended if agreed upon by the IEP committee. And then when schools resume in the typical environments, the IEP committee will need to reconvene to determine what services, if any, may require what we refer to as comp compensatory educational services due to time loss. And so one question about that is how will we make the determination of whether compensatory education is required? Well, we have data about how the student was performing um, right before we left for spring break, which was a nice cutoff time because that was also the end of a nine weeks. So we've got the progress reports to look at there for the IEP goals. And whenever the schools resume in the typical fashion, in the typical environment, we can look at where those students are performing on that same IEP goal. If the student has maintained or made progress on that goal, then they may not require any compensatory educational services. However, if the student has regressed or fallen back due to the school closures, the IEP committee may determine then that that child needs compensatory education services. And um, when we're looking at those, we wanna know what would those look like? Well, it's gonna be made on a case-by-case -case basis. It may be that if um, they need a compensatory education in occupational therapy, maybe um, 10 minutes of OT is added to each one of their sessions once school resumes. Or it may be that they have to go to um, the extended school year and receive services through that. It may be that their resource time is increased until they catch up to um, where they should be with their goal. And so that's gonna come down to the IEP committee looking at the data uh, from the performance during school closures and looking at the goals of the student and what that student can handle as far as compensatory educational services and making that decision. So it may look different for every student involved. Question number five, what should I do if my child's IEP will expire during school closures? The district's brainstorming and trying out so many different alternate means for holding meetings. You will receive correspondence from your, child, your child's IEP case manager or IEP teacher to determine the easiest and most appropriate way for you. 
As long as you as the parent consent to a virtual meeting or a teleconference, our meetings can go on during school closures and we don't have to wait for school to resume. So when we talk about the alternate means of holding meetings, again, we're talking about if um, you have access to a computer or a smartphone, you can have the apps such as FaceTime, Skype, Zoom, uh, Google Hangouts, any of those kind of things. If you don't have access to a computer or to a smartphone, or maybe your service is limited, um, you can just hold teleconferences. Uh, over the telephone with the teacher and, and discuss what needs to happen and the teacher will be documenting everything that's discussed and then we can get a copy of that documentation to you so you'll also have a copy for your files. And when we look at this, again, when we talk about IEP meetings, we're used to the whole crew coming together at one table and discussing that. So when we talk about the virtual meetings or the teleconferences, who all has to be on them? Right now, everybody's spread out. Um, the schools aren't open, so teachers aren't all together, and parents are at work or they're at home, and, um, and so we're all kind of spread out right now. But it's um, still important to discuss who should be at the meeting and who will be at the meeting. So when your IP um, case manager calls you, they'll be able to tell you who is able to attend and who is not able to attend. And if you as the parent are okay with um, certain people missing that meeting due to not being available or not having service, you can go ahead and resume that meeting as long as the special educator and the parent are on the same page as to who's in attendance and they're in agreement as to move forward. So what if as a parent, you're not comfortable with a virtual meeting or a teleconference, but you also don't wanna have a face-to-face -face meeting during this time and risk exposure. If that's the case, don't worry about it. What you have to do is just let that IEP case manager know that you really want that face-to-face -face meeting, but not right now. And so um, the IEP case manager can document that the parent has requested to have a face-to-face -face meeting when school resumes, rather than meeting during, uh, by alternate, alternate means during the closures. And we'll document that, send you a copy of the documentation. And then once schools resume, we can have a face-to-face -face meeting and go along with that. Now, if the IEP is expiring, the, um, the student's teacher may ask you if you would be in agreement with doing an amendment to extend that IEP just so that IEP won't expire, not necessarily changing a whole lot of it. And um, if you're in agreement for that, then the teacher will take care of that and again document and um, send you that documentation by a prior written notice. Question number six, what should I do if my child had an evaluation or an eligibility meeting that was scheduled uh, during the school closures? Similar to the um, IEP meetings that we were talking about, any meeting that can be held by alternate means will move forward with parental consent as long as you're okay with it. If the evaluation or reevaluation does not require any additional face-to-face -face assessment, um, such as IQ test or achievement test or observation, then the teachers will be scheduling those as soon as possible with you. You all can go ahead and use the virtual means to discuss the results and um, determine eligibility. If the evaluations still require additional assessments, then the U.S. Department of Education has recommended delaying those evaluations until schools reopen to reduce um, the potential for exposure to our students. They want to limit uh, the number of face-to-face -face meetings to the very minimal possible, just so we're not spreading germs and potentially risking someone's health. And so with that, um, still an evaluator would contact you and um, let you know what else has to be done and then let you know that the evaluation is just gonna be delayed until schools reopen. And so everybody knows that we have timelines with this. When we're doing an evaluation, uh, once we get informed parental consent to do that evaluation, we have 60 days to complete it according to IDEA. Right now though, um, if we have assessments that require that face-to-face -face meeting, 
we're just going to have to delay those. And I feel like as long as we document that the parent is in agreement with that and the school is in agreement with that, then we can make a justification why any timelines may have been missed. What if your child has just been ruled eligible maybe right before spring break or gets ruled eligible during school closures? When will your services begin? Well, again, when we're talking about timelines, once a student receives an eligibility, uh, the teacher has 30 days to develop the IEP and implement the IEP. And so within those 30 days um, from the eligibility date, a teacher would be contacting you to discuss the um, individualized education plan for your student. Now, two different things can happen there. If the schools are still closed, you can choose to go ahead and implement that IEP with the services, how they would look right now during a school closure and go ahead and start that. Or you can say, you know what? I would rather wait till schools reopen and start services then. Either way, your child has an eligibility that's good for three years and there's been an IEP that's been developed. It's just you as the parent determining when you want to give permission student into services. And so that will be completely up to you as the parent. And then question number seven, what will happen to my child's services if schools reopen, but my child is sick? If services are being provided by the school to the general population, services are going to be offered to your child as well. If you have medical documentation stating that your child cannot attend school due to illness or another health concern, then your child's IEP committee will meet to determine how to best meet his or her needs. So we have some students that were already receiving homebound services due to um, some medical concerns before schools were closed. Those students will continue to receive those services. When our general education services and special education services start, those services will start also for your children. Obviously, we don't want to expose any of our children with health, children with health concerns to um, a potential risk of infection. So these services will look different um, and may be carried out again by the telephone or by um, apps on the smartphone or computer. But those services will be offered and your child will be taken care of. Can I opt to keep my child on homebound services even if I don't have medical documentation? So if the schools reopen and you're concerned about your child's well-being and you say, you know what, I wanna keep my child home. If you have documentation from a medical professional stating why that child needs to be kept home, we can absolutely provide homebound services. The reason we need the documentation is because that is the most restrictive environment that we can put a student in. And so if a doctor saying this is best for the student, we will absolutely honor that and we will provide services to that student. However, if we don't have medical documentation saying that that student needs to be in the homebound setting, then we need to do what we can to try to put that student in the least restrictive environment possible and appropriate for that student. So to sum that up, if a student's on homebound, for medical purposes, we have to have that documentation to show why. Those were all of the questions that were set forth by the Office of Special Education Q&A document for parents. But I know you probably have a million other questions right now, along with the rest of us. This is a situation that um, we've never had to deal with before. And so we are trying to come up with um, ways to serve students and ways to connect with parents and ways just to keep what sense of normalcy we have still going for the sake of our students. And as soon as we get answers to a lot of these questions, we'll share with you. I uh, waited to make this video just to get some answers uh, for the very beginning of this situation. And so right now we do know that the the schools are going to be closed until um, at least Friday, May, um, March 27th, and that we are going to be um, starting to try to roll out services beginning next week at some point. Um, I will also be 
holding virtual meetings to answer questions. And in just a minute, I'm going to give you um, some ways to reach your teachers, reach your school district, and reach me with any of the other questions that you may have. So I can start kind of building a frequently asked questions list and, um, and start getting answers to those questions. Because if you as a parent have these questions, I'm sure there are other parents that have the exact same questions. Um, I did want to show you some of the apps that can be used for virtual meetings. Um, in the upper left hand corner, you have the FaceTime app, the upper right hand corner, you have the Skype app, and then the bottom middle, you have the Zoom app. These are just some of the apps that can be used. It is not an all encompassing list, but these can be found in the App Store on iPhones or in the Android Store for Android phones. Um, if you've got a computer, you can download these from their websites. And so there are several different ways for you to get those apps and use them in order to communicate. Again, if you don't have access to a smartphone or to a computer or to the internet at your home, don't worry. We can do a lot of this over telephone as well. And so your IEP case manager will be getting in contact with you to determine how services are gonna be best delivered to your student. So then, who can you contact with more questions? For special education questions, your first point of contact will be your child's IEP case manager or IEP teacher. Most of the email addresses for this district are the teacher's first initial, last name, at startvillesd.com. For example, John Doe would be J-D-O-E at startvillesd.com. And so if you email your child teacher and you can ask them questions. If they don't know the answer, I promise you they will find an answer for you. And you can also maybe tell them, hey, I'm okay with you sending documentation to this email address or here's some ideas I had about how you could best serve my child and go ahead and get that conversation going. Um, if you have questions for me, my email address is a little bit different. Um, my email address is ju startvillesd.com. That's J-U-J-O-N-E-S at startvillesd.com. And you're welcome to email me. Um, I do ask if you'll give me a grace period of about 24 hours. I've got a lot of emails coming in, but I do try to answer them as quickly as I can. And if I don't have the answer for you, I will let you know, and then I'll get, um, get to work trying to find an answer for you. If you have questions about the district as a whole and how they're responding to um, the coronavirus, you can look at the SOCSD website, which is located at www.starkvillesd.com slash COVID-19 for the most recent information and updates. And they're updating almost daily on that website. Or you can email the COVID-19 email hotline at COVID one nine at startvillesd.com and you can email um, any district questions to them and they'll get back to you as soon as they can. So that's going to wrap it up for this video but I thank you so much for your patience during this time and I pray that you and your family stay healthy and I cannot tell you how excited we are and how glad we are that you're a part of our jacket family and together we're going to get through this. And as always, it is a great day to be a member of